Just like the Simpsons, millions of people are waiting for the total solar eclipse to begin. The moon will move between the sun and the earth on Monday. It'll block out sunlight and create a shadow that'll move from coast to coast across the U.S. for the first time in 99 years. The eclipse starts around 1 Eastern, 10 a.m. Pacific. It'll move east through a 70 mile wide path. 14 states from Oregon to South Carolina will witness the total eclipse before it ends around 3 p.m. in the east and noon in the west. CBS News Science and Futurist contributor Michio Kaku is a physics professor at the City University of New York and he is just mildly excited. I told people <laughs> you were giddy. Is giddy good? <laughs> about the about the eclipse here, yeah. right? Yeah. First of all, this should be on everyone's bucket list. Yeah. Okay? You just got to see it. Now, I'm a physicist and this is about as close as a scientist can get to a spiritual experience. You feel like you're at one with the universe. Cosmic forces right there in your sunglasses. I just got it's goosebumps. It's incredible. No, I said that. Yeah. I know. It did give me goosebumps. Lonnie Quinn said that for him, it's like Christmas morning, that he's coming in on his day off because he wants to see it. He is that excited. You said that it's on your bucket list. And for, so for those of us who may not be as excited as you are, there may be some people like that, what should we be looking for? What, what should we, how do we wrap our brains around what is actually happening here? Well, we are witnessing a cosmic coincidence. The sun is 400 times farther away than the moon, but it's also 400 times bigger than the moon. Yeah. And the two numbers cancel exactly, and that's why the moon is gonna go right in front of the sun. Mm -hmm. This is a cosmic coincidence, and here we are to witness something like that in your own backyard. Yeah. What has science learned from these total eclipses? Well, first of all, the, the fact that astronomers worked out the mechanics of an eclipse 2,000 years ago right. was the beginning of astronomy. Mm -hmm. That's where astronomy began to understand why we have eclipses, why the moon goes in front of, of the sun. Now we want to know about the atmosphere, the corona. It is too hot for its own good. It's about a million degrees, the atmosphere of the sun, but the surface of the sun is only 10,000 degrees. You know, there's a Nobel Prize waiting for someone who could figure out why the atmosphere is much hotter than the surface of the sun, which then was responsible for solar flares, gigantic solar flares that one day could knock out our satellites and power stations. So this is very practical. We have to understand the atmosphere to understand these giant coronal mass discharges, which could influence our satellites. And I see you already have your sunglasses. Yeah. It's I'm all really set important to go. for people to know that you really cannot look at it directly in, the, in, in your eyes. You may suffer retinal damage. Yeah. So get your sunglasses that are ISO certified, and then you can watch it, and for two minutes and 40 seconds, you'll commune with the universe. Uh, I do think right. that's exciting. I can't wait to talk to you after it. Mm -hmm. And during. Um, <laughs> yeah, and during. Yeah. Right. Michio Kaku, thank you very much. CBS News will bring you a special report on the total solar eclipse. You can watch starting Monday at 1 Eastern, noon Central, right here on CBS. Because even if you're not in the path of totality, you'll still see something. You'll still see something. That's right. Anyone in the continental U.S. will see a partial eclipse yes. or total eclipse. I will be watching. Thank you very much. Excitement is building across the country for Monday's very rare total solar eclipse. We're going to bring you the best views in a two-hour special report starting at 1 o'clock Eastern. That's noon Central Time on Monday. Chief Weathercaster Lonnie Quinn of our New York station, that's WCBS, is here with a very unique look on how it will all go down. Lonnie. Well, good morning, everybody. You know, this is going to be a heck of an event for us. And to give you a better idea, uh, of what exactly it is and what you're going to experience where you live, we have set up this cool little solar system right here in Studio 57. Now, we all know that the Earth revolves around the sun and that the moon revolves around the Earth. But at least twice a year, they fall into alignment. And you get some kind of eclipse, be it a lunar eclipse or a solar eclipse, the total solar eclipse, well, that's the big show, and that's where the moon completely blocks out the sun. And it's only possible because even though the sun is 400 times larger than this little moon, the moon is 400 times closer to the Earth. And as a result, from our perspective, when we look up at the sky, the sun and the moon, they look like they're about the same, sky, same size. And when that sun hits the moon and casts its shadow on the Earth, you get a couple of different types of shadows. Number one, most of you are going to see a very large penumbra. That's a partial shadow where you still see a portion of the sun, but a select few of you are gonna to get to see the umbra. 
and that's nature's big event. That's where the moon completely blocks out the sun. It's called totality, and the area where it hits on the Earth is known as the path of totality. And on Monday, it goes from Oregon to South Carolina. So Charleston, South Carolina, you're going to get a bona fide 100% solar eclipse. If you go to, say, places like Portland, Oregon, 99.5%. And then if you go away from this line, be it to the north or to the south, you'll get a lower percentage. About 90% of the sun is covered in Seattle, Denver, Atlanta. And then the further away you go from that line, the percentages continue to go down. 75% of the sun is covered in San Francisco and Philadelphia. And the further away you go from that, the percentages continue to go down. But everybody in this country is going to see something on Monday. So get out there and check it out. The big question now becomes, what's the weather going to be like along that path of totality? And what we've done is we've put together uh, a, a map here showing you where we believe the cloud cover is going to be. And, of course, cloud cover is going to make this a problem. It looks like the best viewing is going to be around the Pacific Northwest. But as you make that push towards, say, Nebraska, it looks like you're going to have a pretty thick deck of clouds, and that's going to make it tough to view. Then as you go through the Tennessee Valley, thumbs up. It looks great there. As you get to South Carolina, it becomes an issue. Not so much inland. It looks like right along the coast. For, I was just talking about Charleston, South Carolina. It looks like Charleston, the forecast for you now, come Monday at totality, would be for quite a bit of cloud cover, even a rain chance. So I put together a list of who gets the best and who gets the most challenging skies overhead to view. So what I've got for you, Madras, Oregon, it looks great for you. And totality is going to be anywhere from, say, one uh, to two and a half minutes. Uh, 10, 19 to 10, 21, that's your local time in Madras, Oregon. Literally, you will go from daytime to nighttime. You can see stars in the sky. It's going to be great. Sun Valley, Idaho, good to go. Riverton, Wyoming, great. Nashville, Tennessee, Greenville, South Carolina, again, inland, looking pretty good. However, the difficult spots would be places like Charleston, South Carolina, where that cloud cover is going to be in place. Grand Isle, Nebraska, St. Joseph, Missouri, Columbia, South Carolina as well. Uh, keep your eyes to the sky, guys. Let's go over to you now, Jeff. Lonnie, thank you very much. We're, yeah. not, we're not in the select we, few class. We, we, can. we are going to witness the most unusual solar eclipse in U.S. history. Could it be possible that all of the very strange coincidences surrounding this event have some sort of special significance? The mainstream media has been buzzing about this upcoming solar eclipse for months, and it will easily be the most watched eclipse in all of U.S. history. Last week, I published an article entitled 12 Critical Events That Are Going to Happen Over a 40-Day Period from August 21st to September 30th, that received an extraordinary amount of attention. And of course the first event on that list was the Great American Eclipse on the 21st. As you will see below, so many numbers seem to indicate that this eclipse could have some sort of special significance. And it begins a period of exactly 40 days that many believe could be a turning point for America. In the scriptures, we are specifically told that one of the reasons why God created the sun and the moon was so that they could serve as signs. The following is what Genesis 1:14 tells us. And God said, Let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night, and let them be for signs, and for seasons, and for days, and years. And in Luke 21:25, the Lord Jesus specifically warned us to watch for signs in the sun, and in the moon, and in the stars, just prior to his return. So we should be watching, and we should fully expect to see something happen up there before Christ comes back. With that in mind, I would like to share some amazing facts about the solar eclipse on August 21st with you. These were originally compiled by the Countdown Report and when I first read them, they definitely got my attention. First contact is in the state of Oregon, the 33rd state in the USA. The last contact is in South Carolina on the 33rd parallel. This eclipse happens on day 233 of the year. If the Revelation 12 sign is valid, then the eclipse is also 33 days before September 23, 2017. Jesus is thought to have been 33 when he died. Just for fun, it is 99 years, 3 times 33, since the last eclipse to go coast to coast in the U.S., in 1918. From September 23, 2017, Revelation 12 sign, to the end of the year, December 31, 2017, is 99 days, or 3 times 33. 
The number of days from the 1918 eclipse to the August 21st eclipse are 26,234 days. 2 plus 6 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 equals 17, 2017. From August 12, 2017, the date of the Charlottesville, Virginia state of emergency declared to the August 21, 2017 great solar eclipse is 9 days, 3 plus 3 plus 3, and the dates are also mirrored, 12 and 21. First big city the eclipse hits in Oregon is Salem. Salem was named after Jerusalem. The eclipse also begins in Oregon exactly at sunset time in Jerusalem. So technically speaking, as the sun sets in America it will be setting in Jerusalem at the same time. The center line crosses through 12 primary states to receive total darkness. 12 disciples, 12 months and a year, the meaning of 12, which is considered the perfect number, is that it symbolizes God's power and authority, as well as serving as a perfect governmental foundation. The eclipse path is exactly 70 miles wide. 70 has a sacred meaning in the Bible that has two perfect numbers, 7 that represents perfection and 10 that represents completeness and God's law. 70 also symbolizes perfect spiritual order and a period of judgment. 70 is also specially connected with Jerusalem with so many references it would take a book to write. Another eclipse comes in 2024, seven years after the August 21, 2017, and marks an X over the United States. The combined time of totality of these eclipses together will be seven minutes. The day of the eclipse is August 21, 2017, 7 plus 7 plus 7 equals 21. The exact point where the two eclipses cross is right next to Cedar Lake in Illinois, specifically right next to Salem Road. Salem again. The original form of the Hebrew letter Tav, is like the English letter X or T, which is in the shape of a cross, or X like the X that is made by the two solar eclipses on the cross paths over seven years. The letter Tav means a sign. The path of the eclipse will be situated in such a way that every single state of the U.S. will experience it, even Hawaii and Alaska. The totality will reach Oregon at 10.16 a.m. Pacific, and will end in South Carolina at 2.49 p.m. Eastern. That means it will take one hour and 33 minutes to cross the country. There is that 33 again. The eclipse is also exactly 40 days from Yom Kippur. Yom Kippur means Day of Atonement and is a time of repentance. While the eclipse day itself may come and go with everything remaining normal afterwards, we need to be focused on what could be coming soon after. You can read the entire list of 33 facts that were compiled by the Countdown Report. I just pulled out the 10 that I consider to be the most remarkable. According to Rachel Baxter, 40 is the number for waiting, preparation, testing, or punishment. It is also the number to start a new chapter of the history of salvation, and we see the number 40 pop up time after time in the Bible. For instance, in Jonah 3 4, the prophet Jonah gave Nineveh a period of 40 days to repent before judgment would begin. And Jonah began to enter into the city a day's journey, and he cried, and said, yet forty days, and Nineveh shall be overthrown. Could this coming forty day time period have some sort of special significance for us? Like I said in my previous article, I don't know if all of this means anything. But Jesus did specifically instruct us to watch for signs in the sun and the moon, and the solar eclipse on August 21st involves both the sun and the moon. On August 21st, I am going to be able to travel into the path of this eclipse. Hopefully it will be a very clear day and I will be able to get some very clear pictures for my readers. I don't expect anything world shattering to take place on that particular day, but like millions of other Americans, I will definitely be looking up into the sky to see what happens. Editor's Note I put a link to the countdown report mentioned in this article, down in the description box below this video.